hello everyone how are you all doing i hope you are doing good so in today's video lecture uh, we are going to take up the topic of classification of living organisms okay um in this video we are going to learn the how living organisms are classified of course we know that there are there are varied living organisms so we need to group them because it becomes really easy if you uh, arrange certain things in order right so for studying different living organisms yeah, we have classified them into five different kingdoms and that is what we are going to study in today's video so what all topics we are going to cover uh, in today's video is uh, how to differentiate between a living and a non-living organism i'll just give you uh, a trick to remember how living and non-living organisms differ it necessarily need not mean that anything which moves is living and anything which doesn't move is non-living correct so we need to go into more core of it then we'll just go into the details of why we need to classify things or for that matter living organisms and what exactly classification is then we would take up a latest classification system which is proposed by Whitaker and then once we go into the brief explanation of all the kingdoms we would take a comparative studies of five kingdoms so by the end of this video we should be able to summarize the different characteristics of five different kingdoms into which all the living organisms are classified so be ready now the first thing how do we differentiate between a living and a non-living organism so for that there is a trick as you can see on the screen movement respire sensitivity grow reproduce evolution and nutrition correct so this gives you a mnemonic mrs grain m r s g r e n right anything which moves is living correct or which shows movement on its own then they need to respire they are sensitive they can grow they can reproduce they show evolution and they need nutrition just opposite to it will be a characteristic of non-living organism is it clear you can just take down the uh, characteristics in the form of a mnemonic correct now why do we uh, need to classify and what exactly classification is so what is classification as you can see on your screen that i have drawn certain shapes correct if uh, now in two ways i can uh, classify these shapes either i take them into different colors or i take them the classifications point as uh, different shapes correct so either i take all the triangles together i take all the circles together then i take all the rectangles together that is also one classification which i can do another classification which i can do is on the basis of color i take all the blue uh, colored shapes together all the green shapes together so the idea is that we put uh, all the things in the form of having similar characteristics so when we are looking at the classification we look into the similarities of characters of different living organisms here i have shown them as if you look horizontally well you would see that i have arranged them according to their shapes right that that is also the correct thing and if you look vertically i have uh, arranged them in the form of different colors so basically when we classify anything we have to decide what exactly are the uh, classifying areas we are looking at or what exactly is the criteria of you classifying different organisms so when we classify living organisms we will look into the areas or the criteria where they are similar and where they are different at the end of the video also we are going to compare different system different kingdoms 
uh, wherein we are going to see how they are similar and how they are different correct so why we need to classify see because class what exactly classification is it is putting things in the form of groups on the basis of their similarities and difference now you can do the classification for anything you may classify things you may just classify your books you may classify any and everything so we are going to study your classification of living organisms correct now this classification is done at different levels so we are studying the first level of classification here and we have put them into kingdoms that is the first level of classification we have right so we are going to arrange the organisms in a little larger group which is called as kingdoms there are five kingdoms actually which we are going to see here the this kingdom system five kingdom system is proposed by rh whitaker okay in 1969 so the five kingdoms which are monera protista fungi plantae and animalia now out of the five uh, uh, as you can see the picture three of the kingdoms you must be little familiar with or rather very much familiar with uh, at least the last two plantae and animalia we have seen a lot of them what you must not be knowing is monera and protesta in monera we have put all the uh, bacteria and blue green algae cyanobacteria all the microorganisms and in case of protesta we have put, put all the protests we will be studying more about protests we have a brief explanation also then next is fungi you can see mushrooms over there then plantae where all the plants are included and the last one is animalia where we all belong to correct so the first kingdom which is monera now all the um, organisms belong to belonging to kingdom monera which is the first kingdom they are single celled organisms and uh, uh, they are the simplest forms of life because you know they were the most primitive organisms known you know, rather the life you know just started with them so uh, kingdom monera includes all the simplest forms no complexity just very simple single celled organisms and uh, as you can see that their chromosomes are also not organized into a nucleus so you know no advancement no arrangement much just a very simple single cell followed you can just remember the characteristics single cell and most simplest without any nucleus correct then next kingdom that is protista again here also we have unicellular organisms but the chromosomes are a little bit organized into the nucleus and as you can see few protists they contain uh, chloroplasts why do they contain chloroplasts so that they can produce their own food few of the protists on the other hand they will absorb and digest food for example amoeba right on your left the upper pick which you see that's amoeba and uh, it will absorb food and digest food correct where so we can see that few of them are autotrophs which contain chloroplasts and few of them are heterotrophs which are dependent on other living organisms for their food also they can move either by flowing the cytoplasm or cilia or flagella now cilia and flagella are the organs for their movement followed the next one is fungi now this will consist of hyphae hyphae is basically all the cells come up together and they form a thread like structure which help it derive nutrition from different sources correct there are some microscopic fungi on the right which you are seeing is microscopic fungi where in here you are seeing the mushrooms uh, they are macroscopic means you can see with your naked eye nucleus is present definitely they cannot produce their own food and also the all uh, the fungi they are heterotrophic of course so what kind of heterotrophs they are they are saprophytic means they feed on dead and decaying organic matters how do they reproduce they reproduce by using spores okay 
motile spores they are actually uh, single cells for meant for their reproduction moving on to the next that is kingdom plantae very important consists of all the cells uh, sorry consists of the cells and uh, majority of them will be multicellular all the plants it will vary in size from microscopic to huge if you have seen phytoplanktons they are very small and they are microscopic all the cells will contain cellulose and many cells will contain chloroplasts not all the cells will contain chloroplasts okay then uh, these plants they are very they have a very special feature that they can produce their own food with the help of photosynthesis means they can use up sunlight to produce glucose okay so they are autotrophic all the plants are autotrophic that is very important distinguishing feature of kingdom plantae moving on to the next that is kingdom animalia of course all the organisms are multicellular their cells do not contain cell walls whereas in the case of kingdom plantae all the cells contain cell walls again one of the distinguishing distinguishing feature you should be aware of okay all the animals will ingest food and then digest them to obtain their nutrients very important that uh, they are also heterotrophic king in kingdom animalia there is nobody who can produce their own food again a distinguishing feature from kingdom plantae kingdom plantae is also multicellular kingdom animalia is also multicellular kingdom animalia is also eukaryotic plantae is also eukaryotic make sure you do not uh, you know get confused let's see your uh, i have just jotted down all the points of distinguishing characteristics between all the among all the five kingdoms monera protista fungi plantae and animalia so what is the type here you can see mode of nutrition then um different examples also have given here um, you can also just go through it what exactly in case of monera all the cells are unicellular prokaryotic in case of protesta again unicellular little bit of uh, advancement is seen in fungi unicellular and multicellular both in case of plantae multicellular animalia also multicellular okay so you can just go through it then um why are we classifying it is because it makes things easier to study right the first level of classification is arranging the organisms in five kingdoms what are the different kingdoms we studied monera protista fungi plantae and animalia all the living things all the um, kingdoms which you are seeing they are further classified because there are uh, stages of classifying living organisms okay now uh, so i hope you are able to learn the five classifying so five classified kingdoms okay thanks for watching the video